Hey everyone, it's really nice to see your faces again. I, I join Richard's longing to actually uh, for us to all be together again in person, and that will happen. Um, so so nice to see some of you joining together for worship today, in in each other's houses. Today we're going to be trying to unpack a little bit about. Uh, the river of life it's something that you'll have heard of a lot recently because it's what we feel god has called us uh, to do in here in twerton as a church and um some of us have uh, some of you will have already heard the story about richard and i uh, praying whether this was the right position for us and uh, god revealed to us that the river avon actually came from the hebrew translation the river of depravity and you know we we're all familiar with the reputation that Twerton has um, a reputation that often fails to see what is good about this place that we now call home and there is so much good in it but we can't deny uh, the poverty that we see here the crime the neglect in this place and the shocking reality that in some pockets of Twerton people's average life expectancy is nine years less than that of the rest of Bath. You know, God has put something on our heart that um, we feel he, he wants to change the narrative of Twerton. He wants to come in power with the river of life, a life that wherever it flows, it brings life. And so uh, we were really excited to hear that, um, to see the results of the survey that we sent out. 80% of you said that you were excited about the vision, some of you said you were excited but didn't really know what it meant and that's what we're really wanting to focus on these next four weeks we are going to cover um, four aspects of the river the river of life the river of power the river of revival and the river of restoration and our hope is that you will end this series not only feeling excited about the vision but that you'll actually catch it that you will want to be part of it and that you will jump in the river with us as we um just follow the call of god for this place so let's begin to unpack uh, this passage from ezekiel now a, a little bit of history i i don't always enjoy these bits but i think it's helpful to know what the context is so this is a book from the old testament uh, and it contains the prophecies from the prophet Ezekiel who belonged to the priestly class about 590 years before Jesus came on earth. And he prophesied the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians as well as the destruction of the temple. Now, some people believe that this passage, this vision is a literal explanation, a prediction of what, the new, what will happen to Jerusalem. But most Christians interpret this as symbolic, symbolic of what, what it's like when the kingdom of heaven comes to earth. So what is this river of life? Well, it symbolizes the Holy Spirit, the sum of God's goodness coming together. And the source of the river begins at the entrance of the temple. And the temple is the sanctuary, the place where God dwells, the place where people meet with God. And of course, we get to meet with God through the person of Jesus. This powerful and life bringing river begins as a spring of water. And I can tell you now it's much clearer than that little spring that you saw in the video. It starts as a small trickle of water from the threshold of the temple. It comes in gentleness, in humility, like the person of Jesus did. And this spring flows out. It doesn't stay around the temple. It's not just a little fountain by the temple. It's a spring that flows out into the desert places, into the valleys, into the barren places, getting deeper and more powerful until it ends at its final destination the Dead Sea. So this is a tell of life and death, where life breaks into death. We worship a missional God, and he goes out. His goodness cannot be contained. And that's why it's important that the source of the river starts at the temple, because mission has to flow out 
from a place of relationship with Jesus. It's an overflow of the love that we receive from Jesus that compels us to join him and jump in the river as he goes to rescue the lost. The river is a place of cleansing and restoring. Revelation describes it as, a, uh, as the river as being bright as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. It's a place of cleansing, restoration, a place where sin is cleaned away and where the power of sin is broken, where captives are set free, where lives are made new. Apparently, the levels of salt in the Dead Sea are so high that fish cannot survive in it. Yet when the river of life flows into it, we're told that the water turns fresh, giving life to swarms of fish of many kinds, that there'll be fishermen standing along the, the, the shore, casting nets. It just reminds me of when Jesus was calling his disciples. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. When the river of life comes, we will see many lives saved. Our, our number will go through the roof. Are we ready to cast those nets? Are we expectant to see a harvest? Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river and their leaves will not wither and they will never fail. Every month they will bear fruit. Why? Because they draw water from the sanctuary. They draw water from the presence of God, from the power of the Holy Spirit. And these trees are thought to represent God's people. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord. That person is like a tree planted in streams of water. Isaiah 61 uh, speaks of God's people as being oaks of righteousness, a planting for God to display his splendor. But these trees have two specific properties. They, they produce abundant fruit all year round, and they also produce leaves for healing. It's not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of those who are hungry and those who are sick. How Twitson needs leaves of healing and fruit that will feed the hungry. In John 4 verse 14, Jesus says, whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of living water. And so this river doesn't just meet our own needs, the needs of the trees in order to flourish and bring fruit and healing. It meets our own needs. But as we draw from the river of life, his living waters will also enable us to increase in fruitfulness. And we will become agents of God's goodness and healing in Twerton we will bear the fruit of God's goodness for everyone to see and benefit from. Can you imagine if all of us increased in love for one another, in joy, in peace, in patience with one another, in kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I expect most of the problems that we see in Twerton would disappear if we saw an increase in the fruits of the Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit. Twerton will feast on the abundance of God's goodness and will drink from the river of his delights, just as it's written in Psalm 36. And we will become agents of God's healing, healing from addiction, healing from abuse, healing from ill health, ill mental health and physical health. Son of man, do you see this? 
said the man in Ezekiel's vision. And I echo him, St. Michael's, do you see this? Because until we can really visualize this river of life coming through Twerton, we're not gonna get excited about it and we're certainly not gonna want to jump in the river. I was going for a uh, little walk the other day during lockdown, just through the graveyard and saw a man who was um, obviously not in a good place. I won't go into details. Uh, but I, I was quite fearful um, because it was a, an experience I've never encountered before. Yet you could see that he was um, he he was in a really bad place, and I I greeted him and walked past him, and then I just felt God say, "Is that is that all you have to offer him? Is a greeting?" And so I turned back. Um, and I said, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, but how are you? And he looked at me and he said, I'm so sorry. He was apologizing for what he was doing. And I said, why are you apologizing to me? We, we all have a story to tell. And if you can't be yourself uh, at church, then where can you be yourself? I said, you know, I know the doors are closed, but we, we are here for you. Um, we we want to hear your story and we want to journey with you and um, he, he was only passing through he didn't live in Twerton but he said that is I've never heard anyone say that before people are so quick to judge and I think we have a choice don't we uh, the river of depravity is flowing through Twerton and we will see people in that river. And we have a choice to either just greet them on our way because we are so used to seeing them, or we have a choice to stop and actually allow them to drink from the fountain of the river of life. Um, we worship a God on mission. He invites us to join him. But we get to choose how far we go. And I love the fact that the, uh, the chap in this vision has a measuring line. How very practical. Um, but, the, you know, the interesting thing is he's saying we get to choose how deep we go. We can go ankle deep or knee deep or waist deep, or we can throw ourselves in and get lost in the current of God's love and be led to the people that he wants to reach. But we need to be in a place where we are willing to trust God because it is going to take courage to jump into that river and surrender our ways to his. It's going to mean uh, letting go of some of the things that we've grown so familiar with, so fond of in the way that we worship. It is very safe and comfortable worshipping in that beautiful church that we have been given. But how big is that door? How many people are we seeing from the river of depravity? come through those doors that vision was not of a temple with a fountain inside of it of it that that uh, believers could drink from freely that that vision was a temple with a stream that turned into a river flowing out to the desert places going out to the people that needed to know life Jesus says in John 7, 37 and 38, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. That is awesome. Out of our hearts flow rivers of living water. And so as we pray for revival in Twerton, as we pray for this river to flow through the streets of Twerton, we can already begin the work by allowing those, those rivers of living water in our hearts to flow out to the people that God leads us to. And it will require intentionality. It will require us to go and spend time with the people who are bathing in the river of depravity, people that you probably wouldn't naturally choose to spend time with. It requires intentionality of offering more of yourself than just a greeting or an act of kindness. We're called to be agents of God's goodness and his healing. 
so are you ready to jump into the river? I would really love to um, encourage you uh, to join me as we respond. And I, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if we were gathering it physically, we would probably do an altar call now just to make a physical and public declaration that God, we are here, we are ready, and we are willing to jump into that river and be led by you, not by our own preferences and comforts, but we are willing to be led by you. We trust you. And so I'm just going to ask, um, I'm going to ask you to do a, a show of hands. If you feel God stirring in you today, if you feel God is calling you into that river, and if you feel that you are ready to be, make yourself available, and I'd love to pray for you now, if that's okay. So can I just invite you, if there's anyone who feels stirred, <sighs> who is ready to come and join in God's mission to just raise your hand now so that I can pray for you. Well, Father, I just thank you that you came as a trickle, as a little spring in humility and in gentleness, that you are not gonna throw us under a waterfall and make us drown i thank you father that you come in humility in the in the body of jesus to show us what it is to go and be fishers of men and father we are willing and we are wanting to follow your call father open our ears to hear what you have to say Open our eyes to see the people drinking from the river of depravity and give us courage, Father, to give them water from the fountain of life that flows from our hearts. Father, in this season of change, we ask for your will to be done and your kingdom to come here in Twerton as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.